Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we're looking at Avengers West Coast 48 through 52 by John Byrne. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like, and I'm going to cue the intro and I'll be right back. It's Troy TV. All right, so continuing my series on John Byrne's Avengers West Coast run, and I should say his West Coast Avengers run, because uh, <clears throat> in the beginning it was called West Coast Avengers, and I think, I want to say it was Byrne's decision to change it to Avengers West Coast, which just makes more sense. I mean, it makes sense from a sales point of view at the comic book store, or, you know, on the spinner rack or whatever, alphabetically, all, you can group all the Avengers books together, which you could anyway, but I don't know, you know, like, what's the conundrum? Like, how are you putting these in long boxes? Like, I would probably just put all my Avengers together, I think. But I don't know. The alphabetical part of me would want Avengers West Coast and West Coast Avengers to be not together. But, you know, anyway. So this is John Byrne's run on Avengers West Coast, his return to Marvel after uh, revamping Superman for DC. He did Avengers West Coast and She-Hulk. So it's cool that she's appearing here. Because She-Hulk was like a comedy book, so it was always kind of fun when um, you got to see Byrne do She-Hulk in her normal, like, sort of Fantastic Four Avengers kind of mode. This ancient evil, it's so funny. Um, mostly that he's been doing headshots for the splash pages, so this is kind of different. But this is like telling some primordial history here. And, um... I love this. I think this is so fantastic. I love when Byrne does stuff like this and he gets all science fiction-y and like going back to creation. And um, I think Mike Matchlin is still inking and I'm kind of loving the inks here. Um, like with the, the zip -a tone and stuff like that. Like that's almost like reminding me of uh, Terry Austin inks on John Byrne, which makes me happy. So. I'm loving these pages here. Is that a trilobite? It looks like a trilobite to me. This is like, if we were doing bon John Byrne tropes, I feel like this is a total John Byrne trope to have like a woman in, in under glass or in some sort of containment, like suspended. You know, we have like Aurora and Alpha Flight um, when she had her uh, DNA realigned and genetics changed so that she could be different from North Star. She was in that glass tube. And then we have like Phoenix in the containment thing at the bottom of Jamaica Bay. Like it's just kind of giving me those vibes, which is totally fine with me because that's like the first thing I always wanted to draw as an artist, like after reading a John Byrne comic book and something like that popped up and then I don't know, maybe it just ties into my, um, you know, uh, uh, like, <laughs> maybe because she looks like a Barbie doll. I don't know. Hmm. I'm sure that's one for a shrink, but that's not what we're here for. I love John Byrne's Captain America. Of course, he had his great famous run with Roger Stern on Captain America, and, um, just any time Byrne does Cap, he just does such a great heroic looking Cap. I love his Captain America. But that's what I love when, you know, just one of the many things I do love about John Byrne's art is he makes everyone look so great and heroic and so right. And like even Star Fox, I don't feel like Star Fox has aged that well as far as his look. He looks like such a creepy pervo with that weird hairdo and you know, always like grabbing women and kissing them and stuff did not age well in this, uh, <clears throat> you know, these modern times that we live in. But I have to say the nostalgia just makes me happy. John Byrne throwing in dinosaurs when he can. 
or Scarlet Witch. He really put her through the ringer during this series. But as I said in the other video, like WandaVision just owes so much to what John Byrne did in this series. Not a great representation of uh, a skyline there. I think those stars are lazy. There, I said it. Ooh, that's cool. She helped. You can tell that John Byrne, I don't know who the anchor is, like definitely uh, different kind of inks going on here. Yeah, for sure. Looks like pinch hitter anchor. Oh no, it does say Mike Matchlin is the anchor. But you know, sometimes, um, sometimes uh, artists do jump in, like different anchors and uh, do that. This is funny, this is like one of my favorite kind of comic book covers, like sort of like the collage, like the, the split, like what's going on, like it's such a like a soap opera commercial, like all that and more, True, oh face it true believer, this one has it all. Love it. Love those kind of covers. The event, the Great Lakes Avengers return. Thank God, because nobody demanded it. I love that they, the corner head box, that he put the Great Lakes Avengers heads in there. That is so cool. I love that little forage. Oh, and actually, John Byrne is inking this himself, which makes me super happy, especially since She-Hulk is on the splash page. And I love Byrne She-Hulk. She is like, I mean... one of his best characters, I think. You know, he definitely has his characters that he um, sort of, uh, you know, resonates with. I think a, a lot of creators do. And just certain characters, you can tell he has an affection for because he uses them a lot or they're the focus of a lot of his stories. Like, he definitely obviously has affection for Wanda. Not hating the mullet here. See, even when Burn when Burns inking himself, I can even forgive Wonder Man's mullet. Hmm. That says a lot for someone's artistic ability, don't you think? I just love John Byrne's tech. Like, he just seems to have so much fun with it. And he's just always puts it in. And, like, it just seems so easy. And, like, I don't know. It, it kind of reminds me of Kirby tech in the way that, you know, it looks unrealistic in a way but it looks like believable and makes looks like it could totally work and that's i think one of the big you know parts of being a comic book artist and a successful one at that i love the hacienda style west coast avengers compound and tiger just running through here looking more and more feral i have no idea why <laughs> why their butler is dressed like a bullfighter, but, hmm. And then Henry Pym, she's too feral. I'm just gonna shrink her down with my Pym particles. I just have to stop and really love the inks here. Like, <clears throat> John Byrne throughout his, you know, artistic career has always experimented with different styles and different techniques of inking. And I think that this is a good one. I like I like whatever he's doing here. Probably probably pen and brush. You know, sometimes I feel like he was a little more pen heavy, like in the nineties and just using pen or I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent certain, but whatever's happening with his inks right here is really good. I like the white vision. <laughs> I always feel stupid saying that, but <clears throat> you know, the vision and his white, you know, costume after he had his uh, personality wiped out. Mockingbird, I always thought she was fun too. And I love the Great Lakes Avengers. Maybe it's because I'm from the Midwest, but I don't know. Big Bertha, hilarious. <laughs> I don't know, you, you go John Byrne, you just, you just go. I mean, actually, they were just kind of cool characters. I kind of like the designs. He looks a little bit like Speedball, though. Um, this guy is cool. Mr. I, 
or no, he's Mr. I. And this is, is this doorman? Yeah. And he can just like become a portal for someone. That's kind of, I mean, seems a little one trick pony, but whatever. They're the Grey Lakes Avengers. They're not the Justice League. Just fun. I really love the art on this. I'm so glad he, that's what I always loved about John Byrne is like, even if he was just like penciling a series, like if he had time, he would like just suddenly ink an issue and treat us. And we're back to Mike Matchlin's inks, which are just perfectly fine. I've decided he's kind of the same house as Bob Wiacek and that um, his pencils or his inks are very faithful to the pencils that John Byrne is laying down. He's doing a lot of double page spreads in this uh, run. And I, this is the kind of double page spread that's kind of cool because it, it doesn't take up the entire page but it takes up a lot of it. <laughs> and he's gotten away from, when he first started on this series, he was doing like big headshots for the splash pages and he seems to have gotten away from that. Let's see if they come back later. Wanda looking a little, looking a little crazy there. Is this foreshadowing? Yeah, she was starting to lose it. Loser marbles. Poor Wanda. She's been tortured and put through the ringer. And, like, she's such a great character. I've always loved her. I mean, what's not to love? She only has the most fantastic, like, weird costume with the big-ass cape and the red-pointed headdress. I mean what entirely is going on there. U.S. agent <clears throat> added great drama to the book. Great conflict having him on the team. Welcome to Pleasantville. That has to be before the movie. Here lies the human torch. I'm surprised you didn't get creamy. <laughs> this is creepy AF, you guys. So... They're investigating because uh, the Vision's body, I guess, was the original Human Torch. And John Byrne is going in here and, like, trying to set continuity straight and say that it's really not the Vision's bit body. And then that's the way he can bring back the original Human Torch. <clears throat> but so they go to the grave and he goes to look and he looks through the casket because he can face through things like Kitty Pride, as we all know. But, um, oh my God, that's so creepy. And I love that panel so much. Ooh, cool. And see the other thing that, um, it was Agatha all along. I mean, what a great Agatha Harkness entrance right there. She is so cool. I love that character. I, I'm not, uh, I was like a little disappointed that they de-aged her for the TV show just because it seems so inconsistent with the character and there's so many great older actresses like that woman from, uh, is it Insidious? Or the, I think it's Insidious. And she's such a great actress. Like she would have nailed Agatha Harkness. Um, but Catherine Hahn was so great. How can you, how can you not, you know, want that and like that and go along with that? I, this is the original Human Torch, like the Invaders, like World War II Human Torch, and not the Johnny Storm one. Like, as you'll notice, his face is a little, he seems to be a little less defined. And I think that was just kind of a sign of the times of the art. But um, I just love it. I think it just is so classic looking. This is such a great burn page here. I just, this is like such a great classic, like comic book superhero page. <clears throat> you know, he's following the flame trail and it's like going in this, <clears throat> you know, concentric sort of geometric pattern. Um, and, you know, I just love it. There's thought balloons. What a great page. Such a great run. I just love this run too. 
I always love this panel here too. I love Mike Matchland's use of Zipatone. I always, you know, he penciled and inked and alternated with uh, Jerry Ordway on Infinity Ink for DC Comics. And they just create such great classic looking superheroes. And I think he brings a lot of that to his inks here on John Byrne for West Coast Avengers. And I love it. Avengers West Coast. Very, like, was he, like, using up the rest of his Zipatone? Like, or I think it was the time of day. Like, maybe the sun is uh, partially setting. <laughs> but, oh my god, Iron Man, too. I just love the way John Burns draws metal and reflective surfaces in Iron Man. He draws a great Iron Man. Number 50. We only got a couple more, guys. For this episode... If you're still here, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. 51. This is another fun cover. This is kind of like a quintessential John Byrne cover, like with the, he adding the headshots to the cover while otherwise, you know, erstwhile action is going on. Everything's pink and yellow because it's popping on the newsstand. Oh, we're back to a big headshot. And that is actually really cool. I love what they've done there. Uh, Mike Matchlin inking John Byrne. And he's doing a lot of stuff that, like, uh, I feel like Terry Austin brought to the inks, like with this sort of stippling here. And then his cross hatching is sort of giving me Terry Austin vibes. And I love that the reflection, you know, because it's a reflection, so it shouldn't be as pronounced as the rest. And they did that by doing like a little zip -a tone as opposed to, you know, now with computer coloring or everything, you could just uh, make it more transparent. <clears throat> and the zip -a tone in the eyes. I mean, just the artistry that goes into comic book art. I just love it so much. I mean, as we all know how great comic book art is. And I think it's definitely, you know, as you can see, in the real world, out in the wild, I mean, comic book art, depending on the artist, is going... I mean, John Byrne, original pages, forget about it. They go for, like, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. And, um... Supposedly, what... Who who was it just bought the original Jim Lee? Um... X-Men cover for $5 million. Was it frickin' Nick Cage? I mean... I feel like he'd just sell it, turn around and sell it anyway. But, I mean, $5 million, you know, that's crazy. But it's, you know, an iconic, historic piece of art, and it should be respected as such. But, you know, it sucks, because if you want to collect original comic book art, you better have the money to back it up. Love John Burns, Agatha Harkness, so cool. I love how she just casually shows up with her cat and lays down the law. Your twins are gonna disappear because you imagine them, girlfriend. And that'd be great. She's like a drag queen. Oh, that would be fun. A drag queen, Agatha Harkness. I mean, that's basically what Catherine Hahn is anyway, so. With her belting out operatic Broadway tunes and whatnot. <clears throat> But, you know, it's Disney too now. <laughs> so where would where would it be without some snappy things? <laughs> you say, oh, it was Zagatha all along. <laughs> this is some, uh, this was just so crazy. Like, I mean, this was like some crazy, fun, horrifying stuff, like, just like uh, wiping out her twins, t stripping away her husband's personality. Like you really want to just like torture a character. That's gross here. I always thought that was gross. How it's sort of like video drum body horror with the upside down star opening on the his solar plexus there. This story was so epic and good. I see, that's what I always said, like the Avengers were fun, like in the fact, I guess Marvel in general, like <clears throat> how, you know, you can have a space adventure one day and then you're dealing with like, 
satanic. I mean, this is creepy as hell, right? Like his his hands are the Scarlet Witch's twins on, on the ends of his hands. I mean, that is just like beyond horrifying. Like, I'm so glad they didn't show that in the TV show. Like, that would have been too much. Okay, one more for this round. Um, Master Pandemonium. That's so funny. Like, what a classic Mike Marvel villain. Like, just leave it to John Byrne to use him. And how creepy and horrifying are, is that with the Scarlet Witch's twins on his hands? I don't know. That just bothers me so much. But, um, written by and penciled by John Byrne, inked by Mike Matchlin, lettered by Bill Oakley, colored by John Bob Sharon, and edited by Howard Mackey DeFalcos, the editor-in-chief. Stanley presents a heart-wrenching tale of ultimate tragedy. You said it, John Byrne. No, no. Uh, where's the dramatic John Byrne title? Like, where goeth the child? The child's, oh, here we go. Fragments of a greater darkness. I mean, this, this is like, like, imagine this, like, in a movie, okay? Like, the, these freaking infants on his arms, like, he looks like a big Chester, like, all creepy with his big beard and freaking catfish mustache, whatever the hell. Like, this horrifyingly, like, white lit background with, all these like weird faces and fragments. I mean, this is pretty horrifying. I love it. I think that would be so dramatic on screen. Oh my God. Yeah, that's just creepy. Remember when William and uh, Thomas, remember when you were little and you became hand puppets for Master Pandemonium and you had flames shooting out of your hand? <laughs> It's different to be the child of a superhero. I love it. It's always funny when um, they're just so like brutal to the the synthesoids and the androids, and um, and fiction and comic books. You know, like you know, C three PO like getting his leg busted off or blown in half. Or I feel like Cyborg suffered a lot of that throughout the comic books and stuff. You know, vision. I mean, he was just dismantled not too long ago. And then this demon that just, like, totally snaps his head around. Hysterical. Like, oh my god, from behind. Like, just, like, everything is horrifying about this master pandemonium with his twin hand puppets. Like, wrong in 16 mugs. <clears throat> and then, shh, we get a break. Back to the Original Human Torch. I love it. He just looks like so classic and heroic. And there goes freaking Tigra again. Like that darn cat. Oh, there we go with the star stomach again. That is so gross. It's like Hellraiser territory right there. This is cool. This is giving me kind of like Alpha Flight. Ooh, I always thought that was so creepy. Like, he's got, like, the twin on his hand, and then it's, like, eating um, Wonder Man's head. Like, oh, like, how gross is that, right? But how cool and, like, well-drawn at the same time. I remember being enamored with that panel for some reason. I don't know. I guess I'm twisted. I mean, I guess you have to be a little twisted to enjoy this stuff, right? I mean, it's pretty creepy. Oh, my God, how cool. What a great Mephisto. Oh, my God, John Byrne needs to draw more Mephisto. Uh, he did draw him in the FF, so maybe I'll have to look that up. But, oh, wow, that is so cool. I love Mephisto. I love the, like, satanic Marvel universe with Belasco and Mephisto and Sim. And um, is Mr. Sinister kind of devilish? I guess he is. But Satana... And, uh, Damien Hellstrom. Son of Satan. I mean, my God. <laughs> uh, screw you, Comics Code Authority, right?
it was Agatha all along. And I'm just still stroking my cat. Sorry you guys went through all that bullshit right now, but whatever. Mm-hmm, that's right. All right, guys. Well, that is our little check-in with Avengers West Coast now by John Byrne, 48 through 52. Such a great fun run. I love this. The art is fantastic. The cast of characters is so great. There's so many kooky, like, crazy things going on with the horror and just, like, all that jazz and just, like, so great and so much fun. You guys definitely need to reread this or find this if you haven't ever read it. It's so good. Um, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, hit like, share my content, and I'll bring you some more later. All right, thanks, guys.